Buongiorno, my name is Abby Latimo, <laughs> and I play Nixie. Hi, I'm Lucy Fry, and I play Lila. What's up? I'm Chiron Ruin, and I'm playing Zach. Hi guys, I'm Amy Ruffle, and I play Serena. We're going to take you on an exclusive journey behind scenes of makeup. Mako Mermaids can be summed up in one word. It's magical. It's truly a magical journey of three young mermaids, part of a pod of mermaids who are part of thousands of mermaids that may well live on our ocean planet, secret for eons, but now in danger of being discovered as they stumble through the real world. We had a lot of success with H2O, Just Add Water, which was our previous mermaid series. It was a huge success all around the world. And we knew there were a lot of fans who loved mermaids. Um, wanted to do it slightly differently this time. So the idea was instead of having real girls who become mermaids, what would happen if we took real mermaids who had to become real girls? We are about to enter a world of chaos and danger. Follow my lead. The difference in Mako Mermaids, of course, is that for the first time ever, we have a merman. And that gives the series a whole new point of departure. We were very lucky in the show in that we um, cast very, very well and that the cast we chose slotted so well into the characters. Ivy was the first to be cast and we had a very exciting moment in the, in the casting session where we kind of knew that, that she was going to be in it. Well, I play Nixie and she is, I guess, a little bit of a troublemaker. She plays with fire a bit and pushes the, pushes the boundaries and just loves to be in places she's not really supposed to be in. The character of Nixie is kind of like top dog to her buddy, Serena. In Make Her Mermaids, I play Serena, and she is the peacemaker of the group. She likes to see the best in everybody and, and in every situation, and has a really beautiful heart. No mermaid is allowed this close to shore. She was a direct hit straight away for me. I gave her five ticks, and you know, I just thought she seemed to embody that youthful innocence that is Serena. I play Lila, and she's the fiery mermaid who starts off the series not really trusting anyone, being quite separate from the other mermaids. You're late. After being thrown so. off centre into this completely unexpected situation where she's stuck with these two girls, she grows to really love them and have a really strong relationship with them and also with the land people too, which is something she never expected. Uh, my name is Chai Romruin and I'm playing the role of Zach Blakely on Make Her Mermaids. Being the sole merman uh, amongst beautiful, beautiful mermaids is, um, what more could you want? <laughs> Having a merman in the moon pool as Amy is awesome. <laughs> we love hanging out with Chai, but uh, the characters are a little bit taken aback and don't know really what to do with the merman because it's never happened before and potentially dangerous. When I was about, I think, 10 years old, um, I used to always go to my friend's house who had a huge pool, really, really deep. And at that age, every pool is like an ocean, you know. I used to pretend I was a mermaid or a fish and go right down to the bottom. And I thought I was, you know, the man doing this. So I've been training for this role since I was probably about 10. <laughs> he, like Ivy, has a really um, jovial kind of attitude and is always laughing and joking. <laughs> yeah, once Chai and I start giggling. It's, it really is really difficult not to love. We need to train the girls and Chai, who plays Zach, our merman, uh, in swimming. And it's quite a rigorous training process that takes some months. Well, we started off just doing really gentle training, getting us all to the same level. As luck would have it, I was a swimmer before I took this role. First it was just getting our strength up with swimming and learning how to do the mermaid um, motions underwater. Then we started using the monofin, which is a big 
it's like a flipper, but you put your feet into it and it's just one, one big flipper. And then we started to learn the mermaid swim, which is your hands in front and it's kind of like doing a worm through the, through the water and just one big kick and then you kind of glide for a while and then a kick and glide. Preparing to swim with the tail, I was a little bit worried because I'd heard rumours about they were being really heavy and being hard to work with, but I was pleasantly surprised. They were custom made to fit all of us. We had a body casting. That was the first thing we did in pre-production and it was the weirdest thing I've ever done. <laughs> Yeah, of course, hair's going to happen. Hair's going to happen. That would have felt good. Just ripped off all the uh, hairs on my knee. The plaster of Paris was put over us and they made a cast of our legs and our chest so they could make the mermaid tail and the mermaid top. It's, it's about an hour to cast the actor, so they're not really standing there forever. Uh, then it's a week to turn that into a, into a, um, a sculpting core so that everything gets built around their exact body shape. As the tails were being made, eventually we got into the tails and that became part of the swimming training was yeah, learning to swim with 12 kilos strapped around your legs. So much fun. The prosthetics company have really updated their technology and they're actually only about 12 kilos now out of water and in water they're made of wetsuit material so they're really buoyant. So it's really, really quite simple. We got our tails fitted and I think for two weeks we just had these incredible tails to work with in a swimming pool. So everyone else in the swimming arena was like, what is going on there? They need to learn to breath hold underwater. They need to learn to be able to have core strength to move a 12 kilogram prosthetic tail. They need to learn to act underwater. And that's a skill set that's difficult enough dry. But imagine if you're doing it with sharks underwater in a real reef. Here's one of the fish. Simon, we're going to do a close-up now. That worked a treat. Hi, um, we're at the reef pool today, first day here filming, and it's really exciting. The weather, thankfully, is beautiful. We've got sunlight flowing through the water, and Chai Guy has been in the water first, and Lucy and I are about to jump in and shoot our first mermaid tail scene. Underwater acting is a completely different ball game. The water stinging your eyes, trying to keep them open and trying to be happy with the chlorine going into them or the salt water going into them was really, really difficult. It's challenging when you, you look to the person next to you and you can't really see them because it's all blurry. It's just so much fun that all those things fly over your head. It was, it was really good. I think if we can act underwater, then you're pretty right to act anywhere. <laughs> So what's up everyone? I'm just going to show you around. This is uh, my parents' house. Beautiful home. And if you come over here, this is where Zach resides. <laughs> you ready? Hi. I thought this was my house. Okay, so apparently I don't live here because it's just a facade. Love what you're doing with the place. But this is where the director sits to view the uh, the monitor, and this is the monitor right here. And this is Evan Clary's, the director's chair. So he'd be sitting up here like this, doing his director stuff. Well, a director creatively oversees, in a sense, the whole production. I guess on a day-to-day -day basis, the director is responsible for blocking the scenes and uh, adjusting the performances of the actors. A director has his or her mind over the entire arc of the series or the film or whatever. But ultimately, um, the director's main requirement is to oversee the tone and vision of the show on a day-to-day -day basis on the production floor. Shooting Mako Mermaids is, uh, like any other show that's shot underwater, very ambitious. Ah! It involved you know, a huge crew of uh, um, divers, underwater lighting, uh, and communicating with actors while they're underwater holding their breath via a loudspeaker, an underwater microphone. 
I think one of the most exciting scenes for me was when um, uh, Zach enters this kind of, this mystical underwater chamber that has, you know, no upper, lower depths, it's just this, this universe of water to find this um, trident which will give him the power that he seeks. That was the big turning point halfway through the series when the stakes really get up for Zach. So it was very exciting to, to reach that and, um, and very challenging when you've got uh, four kids in tails underwater in a limited tank environment to shoot that. And it came up so well, so successfully, that uh, it exceeded my expectations. It was, it was very fulfilling, it was good. Pickup normally is around about 5.20ish. Morning! We come in, go straight into wardrobe and get into our costumes for the day. Here's a few of our early ideas when we were setting up our characters, Serena, Nixie and Lila, and just establishing their palettes and the colours that work for them and the styles that we go into. Get our costumes on, get all these things happening and then we make our way to makeup. So we're putting on waterproof makeup so that it lasts in the um, in the water <laughs> and lots of sparkles. Yeah, so cool. Get these lovely hairdos done. Uh, then it's breakfast time. Number five. And after breakfast, we head on to set and start blocking through the scenes for the day. We've got our stunt scene today, and it's really fun. We're speeding along the floor into a big pile of polystyrene boxes. I feel like Nixie should be like, boom. Gotta hide the harness, because that would ruin the illusion, wouldn't it? So Bianca's busy sewing my costume to the harness at the moment. Action. <laughs> <laughs> diving through the trident, trident? I don't know if I just said that. Trident chamber, uh, doing our own stunts. There has been a casualty, my knee. But it's really fun that we get to do our own stunts. And we have an amazing stunt coordinator, Mitch, who has choreographed this so we don't hurt ourselves. So it's lots of fun. Ivy's not going to have a lot of room to do anything, so she's going to have to come off here, duck, and go. Just catch yourself on the deck. I think my favourite moments in the series have always been comedy moments where, um, you know, the girls are dealing with things like falling snow or a cat that doesn't want them in the grotto. <laughs> And this is Tilly, and I'm one of the cat trainers for Mako. We train them to go from crate to crate. We told them to sit, stay, lay, stay. What would might indicate that the cat lived on the grotto scene, so in a normal environment where they might feel comfortable in their own house. We try to um, replicate that so they look like they're quite comfortable on the set. What are you doing in the corner with cats? This is Poseidon, fake Poseidon. We have two real Poseidons in cages outside, which we use for the actual runs, but for rehearsal purposes, we get Stuffy. Stuffy and I are great friends. Welcome, everybody. I'm Chai Rom Ruin. I am Brooke Lee. Hi, my name's Gemma. Oh. <laughs> and we are going to show you something very special right now. Come with me. Come. For me personally, I've got to sing in the show, which is really exciting as I come from a musical theatre background. Getting to sing up on stage and be on television is the most amazing combination, so all those scenes where I'm singing are really special to me. Harry Winkle, starfish splashing and dancing. Great singer. I wish I had a voice like her. If I had a voice like her, I would be famous. 
the series is at the heart a story about friendship. It's really about how the girls who have very different personalities learn to get on with each other. That drives, you know, the heart of the series. Shooting Mako Mermaids for the past seven months has been really challenging and really exciting and rewarding. There are so many things I'm going to hold dear about this experience. Certainly the amazing people I've got to work with. There's some great friends I've made within the crew, be it our makeup and hair family who were like mums to us or the camera boys who are like the big brother. And so I'm really going to miss the friendships and the relationships that I've established up here. I'm going to miss my tail. I really am going to miss my tail. This has been a life-changing um, journey for me. I think it's something that I'm going to look at um, later on in life and just, just um, tell my grandchildren or, you know. I can't wait for the viewers to see it and for the kids to be enveloped in that magical world. I think that they'll love it. Thanks, guys, for watching, and hopefully we'll see you soon. Swim safely. <laughs>